Okay, hey, we're going to look at box and whisker plots in this lesson. Quick um, lesson about box and whisker plots. First off, we're, this is our goals for today. We're going to try and construct a box and whisker plot and then interpret a box and whisker plot and calculate the interquartile range for a set of data. That's what we're going to be doing in this mini lesson. So here is a box and whisker plot. There's an example of one right here. This is a box and whisker plot. It's a, a data display that shows, basically it's a, a visual way of showing the quartile range and range of any set of numbers or set of data. I want to show you one more thing. This is an important part of the box and whisker plot, but it's actually not part of the box and whisker plot. This is a number line that goes above the box and whisker plot. So this is just a number line. Um, when you're asked to identify parts of a box and whisker plot, you're actually pointing at what we showed before. Box and whisker plot, the number line that goes above, above the box and whisker plot. All right, so here is the box and whisker plot, and here are the parts. First off, this, this is the lowest value down here, a little less than 30. We're probably going to call that 30 just because these dots are a little bit off. But that is the lowest value there. There's the first quartile is marked by this upright line. So in this case, it would be 40. And we'll show those values in a minute. That's the median right there. The median is the number that falls right in the very center when the numbers are placed in order. The third quartile is indicated by this upright line. And then the highest value is that what we call the whisker off to the side. So this is the box. And then these are the whiskers, hence the name. All right, the meaning of this, now that we've identified the parts, again, the lowest value, about 30, probably more like 28 on this. Um, the first quartile, if you were asked, what is the first quartile? It's 40. It's right where this upright line comes in. What is the median? The median right here is 45. The third quartile is 70. Now, this is the first quartile, so the median is also sometimes known as the second quartile, but we always call it the median. And the third quartile here is at 70, and then the highest value would be 75. The range of data goes from the highest value to the lowest value, from 75 down to 30. Again, we're just kind of rounding off here. So it would be the highest value minus the lowest value, which will give us the data range. So from lowest to highest, there are 45 different, you know, the range of 45 different numbers. Now let's take a look a little bit more uh, critically at the box and whisker plot, because we're comparing it to stem and leaf plot or just a list of numbers or some other way of, of displaying data. So here's the box and whisker plot. What does it tell you? It, we know that each quartile has the same number of numbers. All right, that's a given. So the, between quartile 1 and median, let's say we don't know, but let's say there are five numbers that are in our list of numbers. This is just a representation of a list of numbers. So if there are five numbers in here between first quartile and median, then there are also five numbers between the lowest and the first, also five numbers between here and here, and five numbers between here and here. There are the same number of numbers in each section, from minimum to first, first to median, median to third, and third to the highest. What that means for us is that we know the smallest size, and I think 40 to 45 and 70 to 75, those are the smallest sized quartiles, the, you know, in, in looking at it, it's the smallest size physically there. Those smallest size mean that they are the most popular. So there's five numbers from here to here as opposed to five numbers from here to here. And that's the second point. The largest sized quartile stretched out means that they have only five numbers between 45 and 70. All right, so that's the least popular section of data. All right, what we else we know is that we can easily identify the, what the quartiles are. That's the number one advantage of the box and the whisker plot, especially over the um, stem and leaf. Stem and leaf plot, you can't identify really quickly median first quartile, third quartile, without doing calculations. This one, it immediately shows you the quartiles. So that's kind of a nice um, part of that. What it also does tell you is we know that there's an odd 
box looking thingy with lines sticking out of it. That's very important that we understand that. All right. Now, what the box and whisker plot does not tell you, we sort of mentioned this. We don't know how many numbers are in this set of data. We have no clue. We don't know the value of the numbers that are in there except the lowest, highest, and the quartile. We really don't know what those values are. Could be a 31, 32, 33, and then nothing until 40. We don't know. It just represents a list of numbers. We don't know which ones they are. We also don't know who invented this silly thing instead of just listing a group of numbers. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a list of data, 60 through 78 here, random numbers picked, and we're going to actually construct a uh, box and whisker plot. Number one is the first step is that we need to arrange these in numerical order from lowest to highest. That's the first step. You need to have the data in order from lowest to highest. That's important because you can't calculate the median without doing that. And it also looks nicer. So let's go ahead and do that. We've arranged the data in numerical order from lowest to highest. Now we can identify some important points. We can find the median pretty quickly. The median is the number right in the middle when the order is lowest to highest. So it's set lowest to highest with the median right in the middle. Step number three, we're going to find the quartile. The quartile is the median of the lower half and then the median of the higher half. So the first quartile, median of the higher of the lower half. And the, the third quartile, as you see here, is the median of the upper portion. Right? So we basically found the median three times. We found the median of the entire set of data, which was 78, the median of the lower set of data, which is the first quartile. We're going to label that in blue. And the median of the higher set of data, which is 85. All right. So we've identified. Again, this is we're given a list. We're asked to actually draw a box and whisker plot. First, we arrange the data in numerical order, find the median, then find the quartiles. The quartiles are just you know the middle of the lower, the middle of the higher, and then the very, very middle. Now, we also want to find the minimum value and the maximum value. Those, I mean, step four you could probably do first. Really, I mean, the minimum and maximum values are are pretty straightforward. Though. Minimum is 60, the maximum is 90. Now, after we have those pieces of information, I'm going to list over here. Remember, our minimum 60, maximum 90, and then our quartiles here, first, median, and third. Now we're going to place the data on a number line. So I'm going to draw a number line. Remember, this is not my stem and leaf plot. This is just, or a um, box and whisker plot. This is just a number line. And now what I'm going to do is place circles under the number line. And I've placed them, I've used colors so that we can easily identify 70 is the first quartile, 78 is our median, and 85 here is our third quartile, and then I've identified our maximum and minimum using just white circles. All right. Now that I've identified those, I can draw the box and whisker plot. And so what I'm going to do is first draw the box in there. The box goes in the middle, all right, between the first quartile and third quartile with the median in between. Then I'm going to add a line for the median, and then I'm going to add the whiskers off the end there. Remember those dots in the middle? We had the first, median, and third quartile. Those are optional, so we can get rid of those dots. And then we're left with a box and whisker plot that we have created. So I think the process of actually creating a box and whisker plot show us a little bit of um, what this is useful for. This picture represents this list of numbers. So if we wanted to know the value of those numbers, this is useless. If we wanted to know the quartiles, like dividing it up, that's useful. If we wanted to know which are the most popular sections or which the most number of numbers, are between these sections or this section or this section, then we can find that pretty quickly. So there are strengths and weaknesses for the box and whisker plot. Now the final thing that you'll want to do with the box and whisker plot, or that you are able to do, is to calculate what we call the interquartile range, or IQR. I've never heard it called that, but I saw it once in the test or something. So anyway, so if it's called the IQR, there you go. But the interquartile range. And what the interquartile range is, it's the value of 
the third quartile minus the first quartile. In other words, it's kind of the the range of the middle section or the range of the part that's inside the box. That's the interquartile range. So it represents half of the data. It's kind of the middle section. So in our example we had here, it would be the numbers between 85 and 70. What's that range between 85 and 70? We'd say 85 minus 70. And the interquartile range is 85. So again, it's if we were to draw that box and whisker, this would be our box around the outside of that. So we're just finding what is the range of data inside the box. And we showed at the beginning how to find the full range of data by taking the maximum minus the minimum. In this case, 90 minus 60 would be 30. So the full range, 30. The interquartile range is 15. All right, and that's about all there is to do with the box and whisker plot.